Welcome to the itinerary. Today we will discuss volunteerism, which is the combined act of volunteering and being a tourist. Helping me to delve into the topic is Michelle Kitney, Volunteering New Zealand, Jane Bryan Strange, Manager of Woof New Zealand, and Simon Milne, Professor of Tourism at AUT. Welcome, please tell us. What is volunteerism? I like to think of volunteerism as kind of sitting on a bit of a continuum, really. Uh, on one end of the continuum, we have those visitors that travel for the primary purpose of volunteering, and that's what's driven their travel and their decision to come to a place. On the other end of that continuum, we might find people that are traveling for holiday, visiting friends and relatives, and just want to volunteer for a few hours while they're in a particular setting or in a particular place. The key thing is though, it's about people volunteering uh, for, for free, um, maybe paying money to be part of that experience, but not charging anyone for the work that you do. And it's about uh, also really giving something back and gaining something yourself. These travelers, though, well, what we found is they, they like to feel that they're giving something back to the country they're traveling in and because sometimes being a tourist is very uh can kind of consumerist and you're just taking and uh taking from a, a society or a country right and so i think that's why volunteerism is popular because they feel like they're giving back to the country they're traveling in simon your institute has conducted a range of research on volunteerism could you please share some of your key insights and uh, just some of the discoveries that you found well we've done work in a number of different settings probably the biggest project was for apec where we reviewed volunteerism uh, organizations and activities across 21 nations i think what that really reinforced is what a what a massive uh, sector this is globally uh, some 10 million uh, tourists a year travel uh, globally for volunteerism purposes. Uh, they generate between two and three billion dollars worth of uh, revenue uh, globally. So it's a very big sector. I think I think the other thing that comes through very clearly from the work that we have done, both with APEC, also in the Pacific Islands and New Zealand, uh, is that visitors are really looking for a deeper experience when they travel now. They are looking for ways to give back to the community or the destination that they are, are located in when they are, arrive in that country. So I think there's a really important uh, component here, which is about building both the experience for the visitor, but making sure that the experience for the community or the destination is also a positive one. And I guess that's Another key uh, theme that emerged from our research, which is volunteerism can do a lot of good if it's well managed, uh, but can also lead to some problems if it's not. So it's a sector like any part of tourism that must be managed and developed carefully. It certainly has got wonderful opportunities for New Zealand as we move forward. Jane Woofing has been around for quite some time now, although it definitely seems to be 50-50 whether or not people have heard about it. Can you explain more about what a woofer does? And would you classify this as volunteerism? It means uh, we're worldwide opportunities on organic farms or we've taken, um, we like it to mean we're welcome on organic farms. And um, what people do is they go and stay with a family and uh, just join in with the daily life on that property and help out within the home and on the farm. Um, and also join in with any community activities or barbecues or, you know, school fair or whatever. Um, and it's it was very popular, and now the borders close, it's a bit tricky. But, um, and people, part of the experience is they get to have hands-on, um, like learning on, on, a prop, on a farm. Uh, and you know learn lots of interesting things like milk a cow or you know make cheese or kombucha or bread or um, any anything that's happening on a property apart from being a um, conventional tourist and doing all the things that you would expect they also may want to spend you know two or three weeks on a farm um, and just helping out <laughs> so yeah aside from whiffing do we have volunteerism opportunities in New Zealand and what are they? So um, some of the opportunities that I know about are with 
uh, sustainable coastlines and conservation volunteers. But thinking more broadly, uh, the, the draw cards really are sustainability and environmentalism. These are key draw cards for people wanting to take action. And I think the appeal in that space will only grow over time. And um, yeah, so those are some key opportunities. And I think that um, people, what Simon was saying earlier about having a, a, an experience that is meaningful, I think connecting into nature, the whenua, all those sort of environmental um, volunteering opportunities are a huge draw card within Aotearoa New Zealand. Yes, and, and I think um, that that opportunity has only grown in the last uh, uh, year or two, even though we know that long-term, long-haul uh, travel has, has obviously diminished dramatically. Um, as we move forward and as hopefully we bounce back from COVID and we see visitor numbers growing again, I think we're going to see destinations around New Zealand looking at new strategies, new approaches to tourism that focus on sustainability and regeneration. And there are really great opportunities to build those elements into visitor experiences, whether they're going to stay for two weeks on an organic farm or whether they're perhaps just visiting a place for a few days and would like to help out on a, a local uh, clean coast initiative or a local uh, planting day. So I, I really do think we've got fantastic opportunities moving forward and our, our natural environment and our welcoming people only strengthen that, I think. Is there room to expand upon this market here in New Zealand? It's probably just about getting the word out and maybe um, support from the government agencies um, to so that the tourists, when they come, they know that they can actually um, get involved in these things. I think we've got uh, fantastic opportunities to, to grow this uh, part of our tourism industry. As we move forward from COVID, uh, I think we need to look at new ways that we can raise the profile of volunteering opportunities. MB has done some work uh, recently in the last few years looking at how we can connect visitors to remote areas of New Zealand for to link up to volunteering initiatives. I think that's great. Uh, where I think the opportunity really lies now is in our in, in our urban areas and in our sort of uh, neighbourhoods. Um, most visitors do spend time in Auckland as a gateway. They travel through urban areas around the country. We know that, uh, for example, in, in Auckland, the, the council is now focused very much on a sustainable and regenerative tourism policy and strategy as it moves forward. So how can we use new technology, for example, to open up uh, awareness on the part of visitors about where they can connect to volunteer organisations? Um, on the other side, I think working myself in volunteer organisations that look at tree planting on local uh, maunga in, in Auckland, it's also about raising the awareness of these organisations that tourists could be a resource and that this can be something they can link into. I think they haven't always realised that there's an opportunity there that they can make more of. And so I think it's about building awareness and understanding. And I do believe uh, information technology can play a key role in that. I agree with um, all of those comments. In terms of opportunities to develop, volunteering opportunities uh, within Aotearoa, uh, there's obviously um, some infrastructure things that could support uh, all volunteering um, and connecting people with opportunities. Uh, I, I feel like the whole um, well-being focus that we're kind of increasingly embracing, the uh, intrinsic value of volunteering to an individual is really about their own well-being uh, and their well-being impact um, on communities, the, the whenua um, and beyond. Um, but one of the things I'm really quite interested um, with the closed border challenges, actually the reverse opportunity with our um, local tourists, people who are taking leave and might not be able to go overseas, there might be opportunities in there to grow our domestic market. Um, people on leave um, using that time to volunteer. What benefits uh, can volunteerism bring to a destination? Well, I think it can bring a range of benefits to to destinations and also to, um, to obviously to the private sector in some instances as well. Um, 
from a destination perspective, I just look at the work that we have been running in the Pacific Islands, and we can see that while in tourists stay longer in destinations, uh, they tend to link more to local economies in terms of how they spend their money. Uh, they tend also to be people that may well come back again and uh, may come back to volunteer or may come back for a holiday, or maybe they've been for a holiday and are returning to volunteer. So they know more about the place, they connect to the place in ways that are, are more uh, deep, I guess, um, than perhaps just a regular uh, visitor. I think there are also great opportunities for some of the, the larger players in the tourism sector as well. I'm, I'm thinking of here hotel chains now that are actively also building links to volunteer uh, organizations and trying to encourage some of their guests to, to think about uh, that connection. So that takes us beyond government uh, facilitating the link between tourist and, and uh, volunteer organization to actually some larger private sector operators doing that as well. So I think there are benefits uh, across, across the across the spectrum for visitor, for community and for private sector. We often talk about volunteers being um, your advocates and your cheerleaders. So um, sort of building on what Simon was saying, the, um, a volunteer who has had a positive experience um, will take that away and talk about it with them, either within their own communities, if they're traveling back overseas. So there's, um, I guess, uh, it's a, it's a hands-on experience where they're directly able to connect with the beauty and um, opportunities within Aotearoa and share them when they travel back, be it to the West Island of Australia or to the West Coast, depending on where they're coming from. Because they just feel so much more part of the community and connected when they do go back, they do tell other people about, you know, the great times they've had here and the, the people they've met and it's, it's just so much more personal way more personal connection and also uh come they do come back and often bring their own you know they get married bring their own families back um and and you know so it, it's and we've we've found that uh that we've had like families that the wolfers have stayed with then they're the family's children that will go back overseas and stay with that family and join in with their life so it's quite a um a nice little community around the world really. What this does is it really starts to build lasting global networks between between people and uh, that's really what tourism is about and I think this just this is a such an important part of the industry because it, it really facilitates those networks and those links that are, are so critical as we move forward now. Why is volunteering important? How does it help the individual and why should one even consider volunteerism opportunities? In New Zealand, volunteering is deeply ingrained uh, in the community and voluntary sector operating model. 90% of our not-for-profits are 100% volunteer run. So volunteers from wherever they come from are making an, a huge impact into a vital part of our community um, and to the well-being of, our, of New Zealand. Um, but it's really important to also recognise the impacts of individuals who volunteer so we always hear that when people volunteer they get more than they give um that's what people tell us you know this has come out in our recent national volunteer week with so many quotes where people are re re reiterating this um so um you know giving to communities or causes you um you get more than you give but you actually grow and you change and um you become part of the solution so for those environmental or cons conservation challenges that we have, um, we all get to be part of the solution through volunteering. There's a really great quote, um, which is volunteers, volunteering is essentially voting for the world you want to live in, um, which I think shows that volunteering is about shaping our futures. And that's the real power of it. And you know, that struck to me, that talks to people's um, you know, own leadership, developing, you know, new skills and growing. Um, so that's the power of volunteering from my point of view. Well, that's why people join WOOF really is that they're, they're learning how to be sustainable, they're learning permaculture, they're, they're planting trees, 
um, try learning how to you know garden without having to use chemicals. You know, you can change the world by by this. And also, it's quite diverse because the different families you're staying with are all, you know, just different genders, different cultures, uh, different ethnicities, and different li lifestyles and beliefs. And so, as as you're if you're traveling around and you're st uh, you know living with these people in in their own homes, you're also learning you know just how everyone in the world is and you, and you don't have to be frightened because you're you know you're invited into their home and um you become part of their their family so it's not scary so it's it's, yeah. all, it's quite an interesting and kind nice experience i think there's it's clear that it, it brings benefits for for both the, the host and the guest and uh there's there's no question that it has a really powerful lasting effect on individuals um economies and and um and and in many cases the environment i guess the only um slight caveat that i would add of course is that volunteerism is a, a word that's used in different ways around the world and sometimes unfortunately volunteerism hasn't always had such a positive association attached to it uh, there's a recent book that's been uh, published uh, by a, a woman called pippa biddle uh, which is looking at the paradox of volunteerism. And we do need to remember that as we're looking to attract visitors here with that volunteerism label, uh, I think we're doing it for the very best reasons and it's bringing a lot of benefits. But in some parts of the world, especially where we've had volunteers going to orphanages or people working with mm. children, we have had yeah. some negative experiences and many destinations are actually moving away from that kind of volunteerism now. So yeah. I think we just have to make sure as a country that to make the most of this and to make sure that our visitors get the most of this, we're very clear about what we offer. We're very clear about the, the type of experiences we're providing and that this is a, a sector that helps both the visitor and the host community. And I think we can get that message across very clearly. Let's now hear from Simon Birkenhead, who is the CEO of International Volunteer HQ, an organization that helps volunteers find roles around the world. I'm Simon Birkenhead, and I'm the chief executive of a company called International Volunteer HQ. Uh, we are the world's largest volunteering abroad organization, and we help people to go overseas to volunteer for good causes that they care about, and also have a bit of a holiday at the same time. We personally don't like the term volunteerism to describe what we do because it puts an emphasis on tourism and less about the volunteering. And for us, if you volunteer with IVHQ, you'll be volunteering for four or five or six hours a day for five days a week. You know, the, the majority of the time is volunteering. Yes, there's some tourism activity and yes, you can explore the environment and the location around where you are volunteering. But the emphasis is still on about giving back, making a difference. We use the term regenerative travel to describe travel where you leave the place in a better state than when you arrive. And volunteering abroad is a great way to do that because you go there and you contribute your skills, your knowledge, your experience to make communities, make wildlife, make the environment better than it was when you arrived. And, and for us, it's, that's the most important thing about what we do. We're slightly unusual because we are a New Zealand business that actually has very little business in New Zealand. Most of our volunteers come from the United States or from Europe. We do have volunteering projects in New Zealand, however. So for people who are based here, they can volunteer on projects. We have a number of conservation projects and beach cleanup projects in New Zealand here in Auckland that you can participate on. And obviously once our borders open up, we would love to have Kiwis get on a plane and come and do one of our projects in any of the 50 different destinations that we run volunteering initiatives in. So we run about 300 different volunteering projects. Uh, our most popular programs are childcare and teaching, very, very popular with sort of younger demographics. We've also got a lot of uh, wildlife conservation and environmental conservation programs like turtle conservation, an awesome wolf conservation projects in Portugal. And then for older volunteers, uh, they tend to prefer projects like construction and renovation or community development, like um, helping the homeless and helping with women's empowerment, things like that is also about the impact that it has on the individuals themselves. And a lot of people find that they discover themselves through these volunteering projects and they develop a more worldly view of life and, and the, the, the cultural immersion gives them a different perspective of the world around them. So the kind of experiences that volunteers can expect to get out of our volunteering programs really depends on the projects that they undertake. So if you're uh, involved in childcare or teaching, obviously it's about developing your skills at working with children. If you're doing construction innovation, you may learn new skills around painting, renovation, construction. 
But it's also about the interpersonal skills that you develop by working with people who are perhaps less fortunate than you or a bit more vulnerable. And that's where our volunteers say they get the most impact, is actually working with people who give as much back to them as the volunteers give to the community.